Yo, I think we're live. Cool. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? <laughs> yep, yep. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Double check. Hey. Hey, <laughs> hey, going? everyone. Hey, nice to see you. <laughs> I, I'm sitting on a short chair. Maybe I'll stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to sit down. <laughs> nice. Hey, Ralph. Good to see you. Big cash. Yep, they're ready. Awesome. Then. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, all right. So just for a little housekeeping, right? Uh, so I'm Travarsi. <laughs> uh, I'm Sergio. <Circo. laughs> uh, we decided to kind of do a thing um, and stream to like both of our channels and talk about improvisation, something that Circo talks and does a lot of, I do as well, but I was very interested in uh, his approach on the syntax and using the Oxy sequencer because we both use the Oxy sequencer. And so we thought this would be kind of a fun thing to do together. So yeah, Circo, what do you, he's gonna basically take me through his process and I'm gonna give it a shot live and we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah so so what we're gonna do is um i'll do a quick little jam so that we can uh so i can show you a little bit about what we're gonna talk about specifically focusing on the oxy at first and cool. how i'm using like starting from a blank sequencer so you'll notice when i go to the other view that the sequencer is totally blank and then um I'll just have some drums that I'm using that are already set. And then I'll be improvising with other stuff using the syntax as a sound source, but using the oxy to improvise. And then after we do that, we'll switch back and then I'll walk you through what I'm doing. So you can do it on your setup live. And we'll talk a little bit about how to use randomization in the syntax as a kind of creative sound design thing for coming up with cool sounds to use in a live show or you know, to use in a production or however you want to use them. So cool. All yeah. right. And for everybody to know, this is the first time we've used this setup. <laughs> so we oh, spent yeah. all day yesterday trying to make this work and I think it works. So let us know if there's anything yeah. that sounds weird or, you know, compressed or some weird delay or we're breaking up because we're clipping or let us know, please. Yeah, chat, please, please. We think it sounds okay, but it's the first time we've done it. So you never know. Yeah, yeah so definitely. <laughs> Maybe do like before you get too deep, you want to play like a quick eight bars and see yeah. if it, it doesn't sound compressed or if we got to turn off the cancellation. Just let us know how that sounds in the background. Sounds okay from my end. I don't see anyone in the chat yet making any <laughs> comments. Like, oh, that sounds horrible. What are you right, doing? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me, like, I'll play mine too, just to, like. Nice. Nice. Hey, top. It sound okay. It doesn't sound like a like in a over like weird compressed tin canny sound that sounds sometimes live stream can sound. sound. <laughs> hey, Alex. If Alex says it sounds good, that means it sounds good. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Ralph too. Awesome. Top. All right. Cool cool, cool. cool. All right. So I'll let you take it from here to get us started. Awesome. And, oh, yeah, yeah, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. I'll make sure to interrupt him and get your questions answered. Yeah. Um, and that's something that this whole thing is about kind of question and answer too. We just thought it would be more interesting if it was, if it was two of us talking through it, but mm -hmm. it, this isn't just for us. This is for everybody else. So if you've got a question, we can walk through it live and I, we can show how to do it between the two of us live. So definitely put questions or anything like that in the, in the chat. Cool. cool. I'm going to switch views and then I'll just do a little jam. All right.
Hey, Sergo, turn up your volume a little bit. Is that better? Maybe a little bit more while you're jamming. How's that, everyone? More. Let's crank it. <laughs> Yeah, Circo, they're saying it's too low. Turn off your echo cancellation. I think that's what it is. Okay. So while, while you're jamming, and then turn it back on when we start talking again. Okay, let me see if I can do that really quick. And make sure it's direct, direct audio there. Separate the internet. Sorry. Cool. All right. Back again. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Yeah, I think it was the um, you know, just one of those things when we have to have the echo cancellation on, like when you're gonna jam, just turn it off. How's it sounding right now with you for the echo cancellation? Do you have an echo in yours? No. Because mine's off right now. Oh, okay. That's a little weird. Okay, cool. Well, I'll leave it off. See how yeah. that goes. <clears throat> StreamYard. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, yeah StreamYard. Um, so the the whole idea was anything that was other than the drums, so any of those uh, synth sounds were all coming from 
the syntax, and I will actually cruise back over there really quick just to show you. Okay. Yeah, give a mic check since you're switching mics. Yeah, check. How's this one sound? Can you hear it? Your whole feed is quieter now, they said, after you turn the echo cancellation off. Okay. Just bump it up. I'll turn it back on. Your voice, too. Just go ahead. Let's see here. We don't want to blast everyone out, but how's that sound? Better? I think it's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> let me know. Yeah. Okay. So the idea is that um, channels one through eight on the oxy, so one from the bottom to eight at the top, are controlling uh, tracks one through eight on the syntax. So I'm sequencing the syntax from the oxy. So the syntax has just a bunch of different sounds, and that's what we're going to go over with you in just a little bit about how to make the sounds. But the idea was that everything here was all blank at the start, and I was using different things like just randomly pressing notes, using the Euclidean sequencer. One using... second. Sorry to come Sorry. bring your voice up, I guess, a little bit more. Okay. Let's see. Does that help? Is that louder? Yeah, I think it's louder. But just, yeah. Okay. Just yeah. So... Um, just generating random stuff on the Oxy using the Euclidean sequencer and also using um, the random generator. So you can generate random notes um, or you can use the Euclidean sequencer to generate them in a Euclidean pattern. And that's sending those out to the syntax. The way the Oxy sends those out is it sends out on whatever the root note is, whatever the gate is. So it sends it as one single note. And then you have the choice to go in and adjust those notes. So you can either... Um, hold down a note and then turn the knob here, the second knob in, and that moves the note within the key that you have set. Or um, the randomize function where you would normally generate random uh, notes as well, or sorry, random gates as well. If you turn that all the way down to the left past zero, it says pitch in the screen. And what that does is allows you to just generate random pitch on the pattern that you already have. So if you have a pattern you like, but you want to generate some random pitches, you can do that. So I was doing that on this line right here, which I'll just do that one. So that's all on this line right here. But if I hit this again, it'll generate new random pitches in that same pattern. but they're all still staying in, staying in my key that I have the, this uh, set on, if I do it again. And if you didn't like the one before, you can go back and go back and use that one. I have a question for you. Sure. So when you're setting up your Oxy on the channel, mm -hmm. you have to, like, do you have to choose which octave do you want to, can you, I don't know if I hung. So I, I think but I know like, what you're asking. You, you can choose offset, it either. Sorry, I couldn't either, the word offset. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes there is an, an offset. offset. Okay. There is an offset by channel, which is super handy. Like right now we're sequencing the syntax, but when you're sequencing a modular, like the modules up here, one of the ways that I get around tuning all my oscillators all the time is I turn the tune all the way down to zero and then I tune using the offset in the oxy. So if ever I bump the button, I know that by going back to zero, I'm tuned again. So it's Got like it. this mm -hmm. cool trick that you can use the Oxy for with modular so you don't have to constantly tune your oscillators. But within here, you can choose um, whichever, uh, whichever route you want by octave. And then you can also adjust within the syntax that uh, whatever the note is and whatever octave it is by the tune. So you've got a couple different ways to do that. And like the easiest way is on here, just to set it to a different octave if you want to. Um, so what octave do you have yours? So example, like yeah, so C1 basically, or C2 or... yeah, so this is, it's set in Phrygian E. One of my, I don't know why, but I like that scale for some reason. So I use it all the time. And um, so what this basically has is I have all of the one through six are all on E3 because that's kind of the root of that, um, of where I have it here. And then seven and eight, I put on E4 just so I know they're always higher pitched. So if I'm playing along live and I want something in a higher frequency band, I can use one of those two and I know it's going to always come out in, uh, in something that's a bit higher. So like 
this this line up here on, on seven that we were using before. So you can see it's much higher than the other ones. And that's just because I had it set to a higher root note and started from a higher place. But you can set each one of these lanes to be a different note if you want to and have them be, you know, all within the same key, but starting in a different place if you'd like to do that. So I was doing this at one point where I was going from low to high. So I had the lowest note, uh, the lowest frequency notes on one and the highest frequency notes on eight. So while I'm playing live, I know kind of what frequency band I'm putting stuff in, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, let me check in the chat. Anybody have any? Oh, let me come back to you. Okay. Go back to nope. Time. So far, everything is good. Audio sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So what about, okay. So now that you've talked about how you set up the oxy, mm -hmm. right? Um, you choosing the root, like choosing the octave. So you tend to go in the higher, because that was one thing when I was setting it up, because I wanted to get set up prior to the, to our stream. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. Do I go, do I need to set an offset or was it that I, you know, choose a different octave? as the starting point. Right. Um, oh, so, top okay. has a question about co copy paste functions, which okay, I, I just discovered how to do that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to tough copy past deck? That's your, that's your French. Um, yep, yep. That's your French autocorrect. <laughs> past deck in French is watermelon. So that is copy watermelon is what he's asking about. So, yeah, so you can copy paste, um, you can copy paste individual notes on the, uh, on the oxy, which is really cool. So if you like something in one place, you can copy patterns from one place to another. And then you can also, um, in the syntax, you can copy, um, a, one track to another. So if you like a sound, you can move it to another sound. So all of that using like the regular copy paste functions within there. So Toph, um, what were you asking about? Were you asking about cop specifically copy pasting <laughs> on the oxy, like meaning like the pattern, or were you referring to the syntax? Which one are you asking about? And not sure. Well, and just to kind of go back while we get his answer on that, um, just to kind of go back to what we were mm -hmm. talking about. So as far as setting up the oxy, one of the things is when you set a key and then you go into the multi mode the default of that multi-mode is to have the eight notes like the eight the sorry mm -hmm. each lane is a different note in that scale so like let's say you have it in c the that one if you so, hold down the your sequencer four and hold actually you don't have to hold sequencer four just hold down that note and you'll see in the screen it'll say c okay mine says like e5 it happens to be e5 right there okay so are you did you which key are you in Okay, wait. Sequencer. So for this one, I'm on, I put it to Phrygian E3. Okay. okay, so that first one at the bottom should be E, right? Right. Yeah. But, it's then e when you go to the, but then when you go to the next one, it'll be F. Hang on. On mine, they're all E5. Are they? Oh, well, then you already set it up that way. If you If you go to a new sequencer like that, it sets them as eight notes in that scale. And I so got the, you. It did do that. Yeah. So the I top one's so E, I had the to bottom one's through. E, and then it's the notes in the scale in between. So right. I always, when I'm setting it up, I set them all to be the root note, right? So the, the E, I usually do E three, if that's what my root note is on one through six and then seven and eight, I'll do E four just so I have some higher frequency ones. And again, the, you know, something that's really important for the, for everybody in the chat, everybody that's watching the the whole point of doing these things is because we want to give you examples of the way we do stuff because it works for us and if it doesn't work for you that's cool but maybe it'll give you a good idea um so we're not saying all of these, this is how like you how have I'm to do it to e3 is that what you're saying like yeah so actually um a little trick before you get oh, into that. i know what you're talking about yeah so you have to hold the the sequencer down as you're doing that got so it so you're on sequencer you're four about. so hold the sequencer four in the first note and then it'll be e and then like, so hold keep, the button, right? And then hit the, I see what you mean. Hold sequencer first and then hit the button. Okay. You know what? Because I had the offset 
set pretty high. I think that's why it was doing that. Got it. So the yeah, offset, I leave, I leave I the offset at have, zero unless I'm sequencing a, a, a modular. Like at the actual root node of where you're referring to when you, mm -hmm. mean, when you say zero, that's what you really mean, right? Yeah. So like yeah, if so you're there's, there's no it, offset from the original note. Got it. Okay. So that was my first mistake right here. So let me do that. So I'm on the same page as you. Okay. So continue. Yes. Yeah, so that way, once you've got all those set without any notes on them, but you've kind of set that as your root note for each one of those sequencers, then when you generate stuff on that sequencer, it will generate in that note without any differences until you change pitch. And so it's good because you'll bring in something that's rhythmic, that's a pattern, but it won't, um, and it'll be in key, but it won't have any kind of melodic content. So if you want to go in and just hold down one, one trigger and adjust it, you can adjust that one note. Or if you want to use that randomize function to randomize the pitch, you can do it that way, however you choose. Got it. Sometimes you want control, so you just want to change one thing. And another time, uh, you might want to do... Uh, you might want to have it be a melodic thing and have it, you know, generate a whole melody. Cool. All right. I'm going to answer Toph's question really quick while I'm just here. So cool. he's like, can you show on the Oxy? So, so if I wanted to copy, I'm going to turn this off. So if I wanted to copy this note, it's like, I'm going to change it to a different note. So it's G3. Mm -hmm. So if I go, let's see, I did this yesterday. So if I say copy steps, and I could choose multiple steps. Mm -hmm. And then if I hold paste and then you can put touch. it wherever you want. So now I just pasted that note. Yeah. And if points. that note, which note is that that you copied? G3. I don't know. Okay. Just so if you them. copy the G3, uh -huh. now hold paste and you can paste it onto other sequencers too. I mean, onto other lanes. Oh, okay. So if I go like that like the sound yeah, effects now hold those i love the sound effects <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like it reinforces what i'm trying to do here. <laughs> totally but nice. um yeah no it's yeah this is great so and how so do now you got, whole those pattern? are all g's as well so it's like okay cool well if i want that note to be in some different places cool i can just copy it and paste it around so how do you how do you copy a pattern have you copied a pattern like a whole pattern before or just no um if I, you haven't it's cool i just i, I have haven't that. on that my guess would be is that you would hold down the sequencer and then the lane because that's generally how you do all that stuff. Oh, I just did it. Well, it's a duplicate pattern. Let me just. Uh, duplicate makes it twice as long. That's right. Okay. So wait. instead of being 16 steps, it'll be 32 steps. Got you. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, cool. There's another question in the chat. I'm not sure if you've done this, but I'll pop it up. Yeah, let's see. I would like to see chord transposition using an external MIDI controller. That, Personally, I, I will be honest, that. I have not done for two reasons. One, um, and anybody who watches my channel will laugh at this. I don't use many polyphonic synthesizers. I don't really use chords. I tend to use a lot of mono voices to make... Um, the the notes that would be in a chord rather than having the same voice playing multiple notes to make a chord because i i find that more interesting in music so i do it like that in my stuff so i don't really use polyphonic synthesizers in my performances the second part of that is that i also don't use an external midi controller to control the oxy um you can yeah. it has midi in um but i just haven't done it because i haven't found any need for it in what i do um you same know, here same yeah here. i mean you can you can do it mm -hmm. but um it's not something that i've done so unfortunately when uh um we're planning on doing um we'll do a little spoiler here we're planning on doing a live mm -hmm. stream with manuel who's the guy who designed the oxy one mm -hmm. and who does all the firmware and does all the updates and he's he is an absolute genius when it comes to software um we're going to do a live stream with him probably next weekend if everything works out at, or maybe even after christmas we'll just keep an eye on the channels for that but mm -hmm. um he's going to walk us through functions like that because there's a lot of stuff that Travarsi and i don't use this for and so we just want to make sure that, you know, we can help you with what we know. And then, and then if get your else... questions answered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like he's he'll, and then he'll, he will also have him 
uh, walk through the all the new firmware update, right? Like the new stuff on the new firmware, which will be cool, and have a Q and A for that too. Yeah, for sure. And so, like the idea with this live stream is we wanted to talk about using improvisation or sorry, using uh, randomization in a creative way. So what we were talking about before is how you can randomize um, on the uh, on the oxy. And I'll just walk through that really quick. I'll step back over there so you can yeah. see that. And then um, and then we're, we'll come back to this and we're going to work on randomizing sounds for sound design using the syntax. So it'll be kind of cool for both. Cool. Me. So change here. Get used to this multi view thing. I know. Right? <laughs> okay. So um, we're just going to use a different lane because I've already got some stuff in these lanes. But um, so if you hold down the sequencer right now, I'm on sequencer four. So if I hold down that and let's go to three lane three, you'll see the, the orange dots are, that shows you that that's the lane you're doing stuff on. And then if you hold shift and this thing that has the little dice on it, that's the roll the dice randomization <laughs> function. And so when you go into this, you have it's set up as a Euclidean sequencer. So the first thing adjusts the length. So um, like quite, right now, quite, not to interrupt you, I'm sorry. Just no, out of if you can, if you can punch in, I do can't. It. If you can't, don't worry about it. It's yeah, fine. and we can maybe do this because you you have a better camera on your overhead when we go back to doing this. Okay. But um, right now it's set up to 16 steps. And as you dial in the number of pulses in the Euclidean sequence right now, it has one. So it shows up on one. When you do two, it'll be on one and nine because it separates them out by eight. Three divides them up like that. So as you're adding steps, you can come up with some interesting sounding patterns in there. So like if I was, I'll just do this with a kick so you can hear that. So that one is eight steps. So it's a step every other on 16. But if you divide it by seven, you can't divide seven into 16 evenly. So it gives you a kind of a cool off rhythm. And then if you go, let's say to nine, but you'll notice that they're all one note <clears throat> because when you generate something randomly with the Euclidean sequencer on this, it generates it in that whatever's the root note of the lane. Then if you shift and you hit those the dice one another time, this would normally be a random generator that generates uh, gate and pitch. But if you turn the knob all the way down past zero, it's just pitch. And then every time you press, it will generate a random pitch in key on those notes. So, so now if I press this, So it's generating in Phrygian E a random melody on that, um, on those gates that I already put in using the Euclidean sequencer. Now, if I go back to the Euclidean sequencer and I change the number of, of pulses, the pitch will stay on every note, but it'll move around. So again, it's random. So let's move that back to seven. That's really cool. I didn't know that the pitch would stay. I thought that pitches would just be locked to those specific steps right and if I turn the euclidean sequencing so it would change the location of where the gate was that it would play that pitch so that's really cool right so it, it and it's a huge difference between the euclidean sequencer in the oxy and the new euclidean sequencer in the analog rhythm mark ii the analog rhythm the pitch stays with the gate so when you move it, the pitch moves. In the oxy, when you generate those random pitches, you're generating a random pitch on all 16 steps that's in key, but they only play when there's a gate there. Okay, so, that's what I was saying. So it Yeah, does and so you move that. the gate, you move the gate, you're getting to a different pitch. And with the one in the rhythm, when you move the gate, you move the pitch with it. So they both act really differently, which is super cool because you can use them in different creative ways. That is cool. So with this one, you see like, so that was one way to generate that, um, to generate a pattern. But if I was to, um, so I, now I deleted that out. So I don't have anything on that, um, on that lane anymore. And if I go back into the randomization thing and I push twice, you get to the random generator. And if I don't do just pitch, right, if I move that, it becomes density. So it's like zero to a hundred percent. So if I go to say, let's say 60% and 
and randomization on, I don't know, 20% because I don't want it super random and a range of five, I don't know. Um, and bias, I always leave it zero. Then when you hit the, the, this first one, instead of generating just pitch, you'll notice that it will populate this line with pitch and notes. So now there's notes on 60% of the steps because I made the randomization density 60. If I move that down to, let's say, I don't know, 30 and I press it again, you see it does far less uh, gates and each one of those gates has a random pitch and the gate has been put in a random place. So now if I play this one and if I generate it again, and if I boost this up a little more so we have some more notes. Can you keep it within the octave range? What is your range again? Do you yeah, so you can keep it within a range of notes right? So it can go up to 24. So it's up to three, yeah, three, sorry, two, two octaves completely. Um, I usually keep it pretty low because I don't like kind of like wild swings of, of melodics. Um, so I like to try and keep it within a certain thing. Like, let's say I bring it all the way down to two. You'll hear the difference here. So it's by note. Okay. Yeah. Then if you bring it way up, you'll get you hear how it's like all over the place although that sounds and pretty groovy it does and <laughs> again it's it's totally a creative choice and that's really that's really the point of this whole video is how do you use randomization creatively so if you want notes that bounce all over the place like that make the range high and if you want it like for example for me if i was doing a bass line and i wanted to generate it randomly i would keep the range super low because i want that bass line to kind of go within a couple notes but not like fly all over the place but if i'm doing it on a melody i might do it like that and have it be you know on all the way up on 24 and then it does right and that's if it was if i was doing a melody but then if i bring it back down to let's say i don't know four and it gives you more of, it stays kind of more within a range. So it's a bit more groovy, like for a drum groove. So that's that generation, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> of, of gate. So like on off and of pitch. But again, if let's say you arrive on a pattern, let's find one, right? Okay, let's say we really love that pattern. And we say, okay, that's cool. Now you can turn that density knob all the way down past zero and it's just pitch again and it will keep the gate. And then we hit pitch. And then we can do it again. We can make it go up to 24 and make it go all over the place. So what's really that's cool about cool. it is that you can randomly generate note <clears throat> like on off gate and you can randomly generate pitch and you can do them separately from one another as well. It doesn't have to only be together or have to only be separate. You can, you have a lot of creative choices. In so that, what that do you have your randomization set at right now? Like what percentage? I'm just curious. Like 20%. Because I don't, I don't like it to be like super crazy random. Like, and what the randomization does is it decides do you like if you had it at a hundred percent every single note would be a different note and there would be no kind of pattern to it really other than the key that you're in if you keep the randomization lower it'll play the same note at, more often than it plays a different note if that makes sense yes yes so that way i like to keep the randomization low and keep the range low of like the note range when i'm doing basses and then make it go higher when i'm doing things that are more melodic Okay. And what's cool is you can go, so like if we went through right now and just did, let's do a. Do you know random, what the bias is? Have you? Um, I always keep the bias at zero and I don't know what it is. That's why I keep it at zero because okay. I don't want to mess up something. <laughs> it's I know, probably I something know. super important that I don't know how to use, but whatever. That's uh, here. Let's see. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to go through and I'm going to generate <clears throat> without listening to it. I'm going to generate a random pattern with random notes on every lane, but I'm going to keep them muted and then I can go through and I can unmute 
and use that as a way to create something creative, right? So mm -hmm. let's mute everything. So now if we play, we've just got our, our make it sound cool, right? Actually, I'll just keep it a straight kick. Now, if I go through and let's, let's just pick two random ones to unmute, it doesn't really matter. So pick uh, two numbers between one and eight. Changes the scale. What's that? He said it changes the scale. Just so you know. Bias. Oh, okay, perfect. <clears throat> well, there you go. I don't want to change the scale. Yeah, <laughs> I want to yeah. stay in the same scale. So um, pick two numbers between one and eight, and I'm going to unmute those, and let's see what our song sounds like. You have two numbers for me? Oh, me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do six and, six uh -huh, and, and eight. All right, six and eight. Just things like our volumes over here. So that's one set of patterns. And then if we just take two others, let's do, I don't know, two and, and four. So you see, because mm -hmm. they're in key, because um, we've got some sounds here that kind of go well together and we can generate in different ways, we can get certain random rhythms that play off of each other. And as we were talking about a little bit before the stream, sometimes it sounds awful, but sometimes it sounds really cool. And so it's just getting used to using this when it makes sense. So if you want to generate something random and not using it, if it doesn't make sense, you know, there's plenty of times when I go in and actually write in a pattern because I have an idea. I want to hear, you know, something on the upbeat, for example, and I'll just put those notes in and then yeah. I can randomly generate pitch only. And then there's other times where I'm like, I don't know, let's see what the, what the machines do and have it just generate something, um, a complete thing for it. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So I'm going to switch back over here. Okay. Let me just. Cool. Yeah, no, this is great. And there's some comments in the chat getting cool. a little help about what the bias is. I'll pop it up in case people didn't catch it. But let's see, step interval offset around which the new notes are created. I don't know. I'm going to have to mess with it. Not <laughs> yeah. Right now. Online. Or not like, like we were saying <laughs> yeah, before, yeah. like <clears throat> some of this, some like, of this is just like, like, use it how you want to use it. Like there's, there's six different types of sequencers in the oxy one. I mm -hmm. generally stick to the multis because I'm sequencing a lot of things. And I like that kind of one line is a lane is a voice. Um, mm -hmm. just cause I'm used to that from the electron boxes and from like old school drum machines, like nine or nines and stuff like that. So I prefer that, but if you want to use, you know, that's what Manuel's going to show us on the other thing. If you want to use one of the super cool generative things that he's created, amazing. You, the, you totally do that. Yeah. You I've know, messed a little bit with that mat matricle. I think I'm saying that yeah, right. The that's matricial. Seems, matricial. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. Like it's almost like that like that snake sequencer when i first saw it it sort of reminded me of like the what's that sequencer by i know the one you're talking Renee about Renee too i think or something like that yeah the Bobby. one that looks like the old centipede game from when we were kids yeah 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 the uh i had a a um what's it called the squid sequencer the Tori squid mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. has that same thing it has that kind of snake mode and uh yeah it's cool and you know, and any way to generate cool new stuff, stuff, I think is amazing. Yeah. Um, so, right. So let's get into the syntax. Like what is yeah. your, so maybe demonstrate some ways of how you use random, like how you create a sound. So this is like your sound design approach more so than your live approach, right? Cause you wouldn't just randomize live, would you? And then it sounds mm, crazy. Not usually, <laughs> <laughs> not usually. Yeah. Let's switch right. back over. Okay. Yeah. 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 Me... So the thing is, I don't normally do the randomization of the sounds live, although you can, I mean, it's, it kind of depends on which, which sound engine you're in. So like here, I'm going to go. Back. Yeah. The hat, like in the hi hats when I was messing with it, 
a little bit. It didn't sound as drastically crazy where, but then with right. some of the other engines, I was like, whoa, I would not do that live. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like with hi-hats, you, you, you kind of want them to be a bit random and all over the place. So you get that cool kind of groove in them. And yeah. with other sounds, you don't necessarily want them to be that way. So, so yeah, yeah. it's, it can be interesting that way. So, um, I'm just going to go, I have one sequence unmuted here. It's this one that's on track two. Okay. So that in line is in line with your track two on your. So synth. track two on my oxy is, as you can see it flashing over here, it's track two on the, on the, uh, the syntax. So if I go into track two here, one of the cool things with um, the electron boxes is that if you hold down one of these page buttons, whichever page it is, and you hit yes, it will randomize all eight parameters on that page. So if you go to the, um, the synth page, you know, so it's basically your parameters for whatever synth engine you're on, and you hit yes, it's going to randomize all those and create a new patch, basically create a new sound. Sometimes they sound good. Sometimes they don't sound so good. So <laughs> it's a great idea generator, not necessarily the greatest thing to play, you know, in front of a crowd, but you never know. Like if you want to live on the edge, go for it. So now let's hear what this one sounds like. Okay. And if I hold this down and I hit yes again, I hit it again. What engine are you on? I'm just again, uh, sorry. Um, this is the tone. Sorry, tone engine. Got it. Okay. Um, and yeah, so let's do it again. You know, that one's kind of cool, but I don't like necessarily the notes that are on it. So again, I'm going to go back over here, turn this down just to pitch, and then let's generate some random notes and key. You have to be on the you have to be on the right um, the right lane in order to generate those notes. So So each time you hit it, you're gonna get a new combination. Then you can again generate another random synth. So are you using the Oxy to mute tracks on the rhythm? Using uh, the Oxy one more time. Sorry. So uh, just, just to explain how, why, how, what tracks you're muting. Cause um, there was a question. Are you using the Oxy to mute tracks in the rhythm? I don't think in the rhythm. No. In the same yeah, the rhythm, everything I do is inside the box. So I'm sequencing in the rhythm, I'm adjusting sounds in the rhythm, I'm parameter locking in the rhythm, and it's not being sequenced by anything else. The syntact I'm using as a sound engine, so basically it doesn't matter if the, the tracks are muted because you're only muting, when you mute them, you're only muting the pattern. And right now, like if I was to hit record, you can see there's no pattern on any of these tracks. So there's no sequence in here to mute. So I'm muting any of those sequences over here. So if you hold down mute, you can see that track two has a blue square. That means it's unmuted and I can go through and unmute other ones like that. And then they show up. So I'm muting what I'm sending, the sequence that I'm sending to the syntax. So it's not receiving right, any right. of these notes. Cool. Yep. So again, So you can see each time you hit it, you get a totally different sound. Now that's from one engine. So you can go in here and change to a different engine, like this swarm one, which is kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like super sauce on it. Yeah. And again, generate. And then you can go in and fine tune it. And you can just save that sound if you want to recall yeah, it. Yeah, and if you like it, you can save that as a, as, a, as something that you can use later. 
you know, like if you just hit function and, and um, save everything, then you can go, yeah, so it's just gonna save that project. So now that, that sound is saved to track two. But if you want, you can just save it as a sound and then come back to it later and you go in and name it and do all that stuff. But so this gives us kind of a, a baseline sounding thing. And once again, the, the random generation gives you a cool place to start from. And then you can go in and start dialing it in and change, you know, do you want to add some effects? Do we want to add some reverb? Do we want to delay it? And again, this is just a single sound, but then if you added like a kick and a half, it, Right? So you can get different stuff randomly generated and ideas started really quick this way. Very cool. Yeah, so I use, again, switch back over. <laughs> changing, <laughs> changing places again. <clears throat> Sorry. So yeah, so um, I use the, the randomization in the syntax a lot for sound design for coming up with new stuff so right so coming up with cool sounds and the way i perform live is is exactly the way we have it set up right here so i don't sequence in the oxy live i mean sorry in the syntax live anymore i i sequence it from the oxy and the reason for that is because the oxy you can randomly generate pitch in key and in the syntax you can't do that the only way that you can do the key in any of the digi boxes is by doing the keyboard fold and then you have to play it in and so you can't randomly generate and so the oxy is really powerful that way the syntax is really powerful from a sound design standpoint because you can you, you, like it's a 12 voice mono synth in one little box so you've got 12 right. different synthesizers in one box and so the ability to carry that with you when you travel is amazing. It's like how many voices or how much space would it take for you to do a modular case with 12 complete voices, right? It would be just right. like yeah, this no. massive thing. And now that's all just inside the syntax. So for travel, for performing live, it's pretty cool. And with this well, random generation, it just makes it super fun. Yeah, no. And I, when I was setting this up for today and I was mm -hmm. kind of messing around with it, I hit record, like armed the record arm the syntax like not just armed it but record live mm -hmm. and so it recorded in all the patterns onto the syntax yeah. so that'd be like another way too you can then go back and add parameter locks on those steps or you could do it even from the sequence from the oxy really because i was doing that too but it was kind of cool that if you wanted to save those patterns like with that pattern on the syntax say pattern yeah. 10 and, times and it's but... it's, it's really um it's really yeah. super cool because with the um yeah. with the oxy when you're generating those random patterns it's generating the cv it's generating the, the pitch and you can send that to the syntax right so then yeah you can do that so with um that yeah that's that what i'm saying did, so like you can lock like an, a reverb or delay on a specific step exactly and that's and that's the drawback to the oxy is that you can't parameter lock without doing cc messages and setting it all up in advance you can't parameter lock synth parameters to individual steps so within the within the the syntax but if you transfer the pattern over then all of a sudden you can lock all those things to each one of the steps if you saw the video that i did a couple weekends ago about the the new update for the analog rhythm that's one of the cool things is that if you generate patterns in the um, in the Euclidean mode, mm. you can transfer them over to um, the regular synth, or sorry, the regular sequencer. And then you can do all oh, of yeah, that yeah. stuff there as well. And then you can regenerate a new one and send it to a different sequencer. So it, it's a cool thing that that one does kind of within the box. And this is a way to do it between the two machines. Hey, can you try something? Sure. So I'm sure, I mean, I would think because you can do trigless mm -hmm. parameter locks on the syntax. So add a few trigless, like turn up the delay on one of the. Okay. So I tried the, this. Did you try <laughs> no, it already? Yeah. But let me show you what it does. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So it actually, <clears throat> it's kind of like 
a generic way to do um, the effect scenes, like what you have it in the, in the Octatrack, right? So mm -hmm. let's just, I'm going to reduce this down to just a couple notes so it's not too clustery. Right, so I'm on track two mm -hmm. right now. So if I go into the record mode and I hold down function and any trigger, the reason why it's yellow is because that's a trigless trig. So there's no right. note triggered there, but I can parameter lock to it. So if I hold that down and I go to... You look at delay or something, something really obvious so people can... I could even change the pitch. Okay, so what this does is now it acts like a scene in the octa track. So right now, you notice it doesn't do anything when it goes by it because it's not using this sequencer. But if I press it, it'll do all those parameter locks. Watch this. And then if I release it, it goes right back to the old one. Oh, you mean like you on that specific yeah. yeah, but it doesn't just change that. Actually, <clears throat> I'll stay here. It doesn't just change that step. That's the thing. It, because there's not a sequencer for it to be playing with in there, it thinks there's nothing playing. So that triggerless trig doesn't do anything. But wait, but, is it on the same step as your... I don't think it's on the same step as your sequence. You were looking at sequence number two, right? So what is that? One, I can't see because it's... Yeah, it's so I'm, I'm, on, I'm on number two. Right. So like, look at the steps on the oxy and mm -hmm. put it on the same step. as. No, but that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> you can't put it on a step here. I could put that anywhere that I want to. Well, so just here, humor me can... and put it on the same step. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it, it, it doesn't do anything. That's what I'm saying. You won't hear anything. Okay. All the just only time this <laughs> does anything is if you press it down. Right. And then it does it. So like right now, so it's not doing anything on yeah, any step. Yeah, but humor me and put it on the same step. Put the trigless trig on the same step that Oxy is on. Okay, so the Oxy, it's on step seven. Oops. See, it, it yeah. doesn't, still doesn't do anything. Sorry, thank but... you for humoring me. I needed, <laughs> I needed to see that. The... But here's the difference. Let's hold this one down. <laughs> right, actually, let's let's just delete this one for now and put a new one in. Right. So now there's a new parameter locked there, but it doesn't have anything locked to it. So now if I hold this down and I go in and I change, let's say, the overdrive in this. So all of that's now locked to seven. The stuff we did before is, and, and it's seven is not a step. It's a scene like what you would have in the Octatrack. So now if I hold down 11, that's the have first group. Now instead. Yeah. So now scenes. 11 acts like it has those first parameter locks for as long as I hold it down and then I let it go. And now seven has the other set of parameter locks. And then if we release it, it goes back to the original. That's pretty cool. So it's yeah, like so it's form of improv like performance. Yeah, it's yeah. it was really funny because the way the way I came up with that was trying to do exactly what you asked me to do. I was like, hey, I can do a trigless trig, and then it's going to do those things, and I can lock without having the the sequencer, and yeah. it didn't. And I was like, oh man but I have stuff locked to it. And then every time I would push it down, I was like, wait a minute, this is a scene. I could make that one thing be a high pass filter. I could make that one thing be just a delay. And anytime mm -hmm. I press that, it delays that whole sound. So cool. mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, it was it was totally by accident. Now the problem is you have to be in record mode for that to work. And if you just touch the thing, you delete it. <laughs> so it's oh. it's not really set up to do it this way. It was just some like random hack thing that I happened across. Right, right. But right. but yeah, I mean it's it's like you said, it's another super fun way to to do uh, you know improvisation stuff. Very cool.
Let me check in with the chat. I've yeah. had some comments, been popping them up. Um, does anybody have any questions? We're kind of approaching the top of the hour. So just want to check in with everyone. And also thanks for being here. This is. Yeah. Thank you, know, you guys. Yeah. It's fun I, to do it this way. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it a little more so we can talk and answer questions and yeah. just bounce ideas, which. Yeah. Brian, Brian posted great timing. I'm just setting up my oxy now. <laughs> yep. 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 I popped That's it up. Good. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> very cool yeah no it's a very powerful sequencer for sure i just i definitely don't know all the things that it can do because i feel like as i use it a little bit more it just keeps i learn you know every time you use something you learn a little bit more goes a little bit deeper and it's a very deep sequencer so it can it be is. as simple or as complex as you want it to be which I exactly like. and the Room same for growth you know Right. And the same with the electron boxes, like they're super deep synthesizers as well as sequencers. So mm -hmm. like you have all these options. And the, the thing I love about this is that like when I went out to Seattle a couple months ago and I played the show with Matthew out there, we were talking about how similar our two setups are as far as the gear we use, mm -hmm. but how completely different the sound is that we're getting out of them. And that's what's so cool is we've all got this gear that's kind of the same, but we're all using it in our own creative combinations of ways. Mm -hmm. And that's like with these improvisational things, these randomization things, some people may not want to use that, or some people may want to use it for production or only for generating rhythms, but everybody has the, the, the ability to use them however you want to. Yes. Hey, synth dad. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Uh, he has a question. Cool. Do you apply LFOs or mod lanes to the randomization parameters to vary them over time? Or is I that tried too much it random? last night. It gets kind of crazy. It, it depends. I don't <laughs> yeah. generally do it from the oxy. You know, so you can generate LFOs. You can generate all kinds of cool stuff from the oxy. I don't usually use those mod lanes at all in the oxy, but I do hmm. use them inside the sequencer. So, like one of the. So a, a quick step back. The Wait, way what I, do you mean inside the sequencer? Or do you mean yeah, inside the syntax or inside? Inside the syntax, yeah, not inside. Inside the synthesizer, yeah, okay. not the yeah, sequencer, yeah. yeah. yeah so, yeah. Uh, you know, a step back, the way I set up for a live show, um, because my shows are improvised completely, I want to have sounds, but not patterns and songs and things all set up. But I want to mm -hmm. do that sound design in advance. So I'll go through these, you know, the things we've been talking about today, like how to generate random sounds in the syntax. And I'll be like, Oh, that's a cool one. I'm going to save that one. Okay. Now I'm going to do another one. Now I'm going to save that one within those. Um, you saw that I generated the random and then I went through and started tweaking it. Right. So I started with like, okay, now I'm going to add filter. Now I'm going to, okay, I'm going to shorten this one up. I'm going to, you know, the envelopes a little too long or whatever, and I'll mm -hmm. dial the sound in. That's where I'll add LFOs and things like that. So I might have an LFO mm -hmm. moving the filter cutoff to make that sound more interesting, but there's not a pattern yet. So I'm just coming up with the sound that will be like a useful tool when I'm playing live. So I can generate the random stuff in the oxy with sounds that I know sound cool and that will sound good together. Got you. So just like, so, so kind of circling back and just reiterating some things. So talk about, so when you're setting up the oxy now, so you have it mm -hmm. in the multi on the sequencer, multi one channel assigned per MIDI track to the syntax so mm -hmm. one for one two for two and so forth then do you have any other advice like because you have the eight track well 12 voices really or 12 mm -hmm. synths really right so any recommendations like do you say like okay for the first four you want to have like bases and maybe the next four you do something else and the next four you do something else like what other structural tips can you give mm -hmm to have basically to set up this improvisational setup to, to win and have fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. what are there, yeah, yeah like, I mean, are there... as we both know, we've talked about this a bunch offline. It, it's really important to have your gear set up in a way that it's usable live. Cause you're, mm -hmm. it's stressful and you're in a room and it's loud and it's dark and you, you like, you, you need to have it set up in a way where you know where everything is. And mm -hmm. again, there's not a right or wrong way to do that. Like if you're, if you're, 
if you're creating whole songs and patterns in advance, you're going to set it up differently than somebody who's improvising a hundred percent. And if you're right, doing right. somewhere in the middle where you've got patterns, but you've got room for improvisation, you're going to set that up differently than either of the others. Mm -hmm. So it really comes down to, down to what you like. So I'll just show really quick, um, switch back over again. here. Yeah. Yeah. So like, how do you, how is it? Yeah. yeah. So the, uh, in a couple things, um, f I'll start with the rhythm because that's the one that has the most structure. So for me, track one is always the kick. It's always kind of my basic, the, the, the kick by itself. Um, five and six are always different rumbles for the kick. So I can put those together. So let me mute this so I can just play just the rhythm. So one is always a kick. And if I go through and I change patterns, you know, to a different pattern, <laughs> but if I change to, uh, to a different pattern, one will always be the kick. If I go yeah. to a different kit, cause the rhythm has different kits within it. One is always a kick. So if I change in the middle of a song, I know I'm going to at least have a kick on that spot and not like some random, like, I don't know, right. synth stab or whatever. Right, so right. kick, um, these are both rumbles always. So again, different versions. So you've got like a, a backing rumble. This one's a little bit more tonal. Um, two is always a snare or a clap. But on every kit, it's a different snare or clap and a different uh, kick. Then up here, I use always cymbals. So I've always got closed hat here, open hat, and another open hat. And then on this end, I'll put something that's like the closed hat pattern. So a 16th note, but that's not a cymbal. So like on this one, it's like... So while you're jumping to a different pattern, I'm going to just, you know, reiterate the whole structure of the rhythm. So the reason why he does the closed, open, open, closed is if you, for those who have a rhythm, you'll know that it, those, the first top two choke each other out yeah. and then the next top two to the right choke. Yeah. So nine and 10 choke. Thank 11 you. and 12 choke, seven too. and eight and three and four, they all choke each other. So that's four voices with eight tracks. And then right. these four, the one, two, five, and six are individual voices. They don't, they're not part of any choke group. Got it. So yes. with that, with that set up, I have seven, eight, three, and four. Those are, it can be whatever. So I've got them set up as like, like, um, percussive things but that are tonal if that makes sense it's not melodic elements but they're like tonal percussive so like so so you can hear it's they're just like kind of sounds that are in there so anyway right. that's my structure there so i always know where everything is you know and i can always kind of you know if everything else goes haywire and a machine falls off the table or whatever i can always come back to drums and i know where they are exactly <laughs> so that's right. super important for me with um with setting up the the oxy and melodic elements it's a little different depending on what i'm using so with the syntax the way this is set up with the eight voices on these eight lines I usually set that up with all the digital voices in one synthesizer. And if I want to use the four analog ones, I'll put them and on one a separate. Sequencer, right? uh, yeah, one sequencer, sorry. Yeah. Um, and, and if I want to use the four analog voices, I'll put them on a different sequencer. So I know, because um, the, the Oxy, as you know, has one, two, three, four are different sequencers. So right now this is four, but there's eight lanes. You know, three also has eight lanes, but it's set up for something else. So... Um, and then what I generally do is, um, as I mentioned earlier, I'll have the, the lower numbers. So like one through six be in one octave and then seven and eight be in a higher octave. So it, it'll still be in that same root note or that same key. But that way when I'm playing, if I need something in high, in a higher range, I can put it there. I can also, um, I have also in the past set this up. So it basically goes from lowest frequency range to highest all the way across the eight. So then if okay. I'm playing live and I want like something in the high mids, I know that's probably going to be on channel, you know, five or four six, or five or something. Yeah. Or four or five, six in that range. Got it. And so it's just a way to always kind of more or less know what you're coming back to. But I, but I'll set up the, the, the pattern in the, 
um, the Syntact as basically a drum kit, just like I would in here, except it's like a synth kit. So it's just sounds. There's no patterns there. And I know that all 12 of those sounds sound good together. So any combination that I pick um, from the sound design that I did earlier, any combination that I pick, I know will work together. They're not like, you know, one super melodic and the other one super industrial or whatever. I'll kind of keep those together. And if I want a different group of sounds, I just open a different pattern and that'll be another, a new kit for me. And then here. that kit is created to kind of all the sounds work together within that particular kit. Exactly. So you, you jump to that. Got it. That's yeah. pretty cool. Good, and so that, it's just organize. a way to keep it. Yeah. Do you save? So now, um, so there's a couple questions. So I have, a mm -hmm. question in the chat also has a question. So maybe you can demonstrate this. So sure. Toft asks, how can, can you show your favorite uh, tricks with the syntax using the LFO? So my question then is not only show, like if you can answer Toft's question, but mm -hmm. also is there any specific way that you can recommend, like how do you save your sounds? Do you lay, do you go through and make sure like on the syntax you can choose do you categorize your sounds so you know you can find those sounds again? Or is it like you just use them on those patterns? And do you really actually go and save the sound into your library? Like, yeah, do you go through so, all that? Or? Yeah, so I don't save individual sounds as sounds. You totally can. I just save them within the kit because I'm not trying to duplicate that sound into another kit. I'm The reason why I use the syntact and not the detect as often is because I'm a synth person <laughs> I'm like making the sounds and not like oh hey I have this awesome kick in a file and I'm going to use that kick every time and it's I see the saving the sounds kind of the same way I don't want to have it be the same sounds from kit to kit to kit um, I do with the rhythm because I do want certain sounds to be similar like the kicks and the cymbals I like when they're when they have some continuity to them um, but with the synth right. ones I would rather they kind of stayed uh, stayed well together and then as far as using the LFO, I mean, within the syntax, the cool thing with the, with, and, and this goes for a few of the other boxes too, not the rhythm, unfortunately, but um, this has two LFOs per uh, track. Mm -hmm. And so, yep. so basically in 12 tracks, you have 24 LFOs. So you have a lot that you can use them for. So depending on what the sound is, um, I, I tend to keep certain things really basic because I don't know how I'm going to use them together live. Um, and then there's a lot of times that I'll dial in an LFO live if I'm like, oh, I like the sound of that, but I need my hand free. So I'm going to make the LFO do the thing. Um, and that comes from like the modular thing. Like I'm sure you do the same thing. Right. Like, like, like with I've the got like, like I have an LFO here, like for a quad LFO that I don't have plugged into anything right now. Because if I'm doing something when I'm playing live, I'm just going to patch it and go, okay, yeah, let's just use that one. Now I'm going to move on to something else. And I do the same thing in the syntax all the time. Yeah, that's what I do too. I use like the patch. I leave patch cables hanging off the Batumi and the um Pamela's workout. Yep. And, yeah, then I see that. and I do the same with the Pams too because you've got so many options for modulation. And I don't ever because I'm not playing tracks that are supposed to sound a certain way. I don't patch like I don't hard patch things and go, yeah, this is gonna always be the LFO for this thing. And it's the exact same within the syntax or the modular. It's kind of exactly the same way. Yeah, so yeah. I'll use them for certain things, but like, for example, within the, within the rhythm on the, like on my 16th hats, like on these, I'll go in on that track and I'll use the, the LFO on the, the decay time. And then I'll dial that in and then I'll set it to a random wave. And you hear it just kind of has changes all over the place with the hats. Mm -hmm, so you, you mm -hmm. always talk about like, how do you humanize your hats? Cause you, cause when you're a human drummer, you never hit it exactly the same twice. That's a mm -hmm. great LFO trick for hats is just put it on a random wave and put that on either the decay or the tune or the attack or figure out which one you like the best for what you're doing and then dial in the, the depth of it. So it'll give it a lot of kind of fluctuation between sounds and that the same works in the, the syntax. If you're using it for drums, um, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I'm not, <laughs> so it's, I don't use that very often, but with the syntax, I like to use, um, LFOs, you know, 
obviously the most basic is on a filter cutoff. So you can have a sound that moves a bit, but you can also set, because you've got so many destinations. Like um, on the envelope is pretty. Yeah. yeah. Like you mm -hmm. can like it, it, different parameters. Like envelope is pretty putting it yeah. on. The end. Yep. Yep, exactly. And again, it just totally depends on the sound you're looking for. There's not one like, oh, this works on every single thing. Um, but yeah, um, and another little trick is you've got this mode. So it's either like the free flowing and for people who don't do modular, this is something I think that a lot of people aren't used to seeing is to have an LFO that's kind of free flowing or one that resets. Um, mm -hmm. So that it, that it resets with the trigger. So if you're, um, and I'm not sequencing in here, so there's no trigger, so you wouldn't see that. But if you've got one that resets with the trigger, it'll act however it acts every time the trigger plays. It, that LFO will move through its cycle from the start of the trigger. And if it's in free flowing mode, um, it just kind of is moving around no matter whether or not their trigger's playing. So using the Oxy to sequence, because there's no triggers, I tend to keep everything in that free mode and use it like that. I'm not using it on individual hits like like you would if you were sequencing within the syntax. Right. So actually, I'm glad you kind of touched on that again because so above the trees, so just to answer your question, um, it was when referring to the scenes when holding the step on the rhythm as well as any of the other boxes. I would imagine it'd be the same because their sequencers are pretty much the same on the dig attack you know, in terms of trigger, oh, yeah. trigless, the trigless functions, right? Yeah. So, so you like can on do the that. Tech, on the Oxy, you definitely can do w what we were doing, what he was demonstrating on the Syntax. You could do that on the Digitag. You can do that on the, on the rhythm yeah. as well. Yeah. All the, all yeah. the electron and boxes the all can do trigless trigs. And if you're sequencing from something other than inside that box itself, they act the same. Yeah, no matter which one you're using. So yeah, I, yeah. I happened upon it on this, but you can use it on any of them. Yeah. Cool. So All what right. other questions um, do we have in here? Uh, that was pretty much it. I mean, uh, let's see. Yes, you can send program changes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. They're talking about program changes from the Oxy. I personally have not done that, but I know that the Oxy is capable of doing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And, um, and the same thing, I don't either because that's not the way that I play, but... Mm -hmm. Again, you know, every single one of these machines, use them how they work best for you. Don't necessarily try to throw the kitchen sink in every song you're doing and try to have it use every function that it can possibly do. That's usually the biggest problem with the Octatrack whenever anybody gets that. They want it to be a synth and a sampler and a drum machine and a live looper and a whatever in every song. And it's like, it's not because it can do things that you should. And it's the same with any of these, <laughs> you know, like use right. them for, for what they're good for. Cool. Yep. Um, so yeah, I guess we're a little over an hour. So I just want to check in, make sure anyone has any other questions before we wrap it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Happy to answer any questions. And if you think of something after the stream, I mean, these will be posted on both of our channels. So mm -hmm. just pop into the comments and, uh, and ask whatever questions you have. And mm -hmm. I will say, you know, we have like Synthad is in the comments right now. When I first got my Oxy, the, his tutorials were the first that I watched because they're super, super good at giving you how the Oxy actually works. And then I went through and I was like, okay, that is useful to me. That's useful to me. And those are the things I do now. And so I think the same applies to any of these, like, like learn how it's used and then figure out what works for you. And his tutorials are great. They're the, like my favorite ones for, for the, uh, for the Oxy. Yes. Yeah. I watched him too. Um, above the trees was making some comments about thinking about adding the octa track, but now maybe the syntax, the one thing, um, just to reiterate using that trigless function as just so we're clear on it, like the octa track has defined scenes, right? You mm -hmm. can, you have the crossfader, you have, you can add a bunch of different parameter settings, and cross fade from one scene to the next and so forth. With the trigless condition, the way uh, Circo was using it, you have to turn on, like arm the track and be conscious about when you hold that button to activate that trigless condition, 
that you don't lift your finger off and then lose what you did. Now, yes, you could probably reload as a safety, you know, save the pattern and reload. So therefore it'll put the triggers condition back. But the that's other, definitely uh, a workaround. It's not yeah, really totally. like a defined, <laughs> it's not, like, C it's thing. not made so to work. That way. <laughs> yeah, it's not really made to work. So if you're like, hey, I want to have defined scenes, be able to crossfade. And I mean, the Octatrek is powerful. And if you're going to do that, I would highly recommend looking at the Octatrek deeper to see if that does exactly what it is that you want to do. Don't lean into another machine just for the sake of using it as a scene launcher yeah. and, if you will. And like the, it's just it's not this it's not the same it's the, just it's, a workaround it's totally a fun not workaround. the same the the key yeah, is yeah. that that thing that i just showed that's only affecting that individual track where with the octatrack a scene is affecting yeah. you can affect any one of the four inputs and you can use the octatrack as a performance mixer which is the way right. i use it yeah. the way you use it the it's way just, easybots template works and everything so this you're, is way more powerful. Way like more powerful. Scene. So yeah, not yeah. only are like you saving it. it, but they're also their master effects and they can use different mm -hmm. incoming tracks differently. And you have the parts. So you have four individual mm -hmm. banks of 16 performance effects that affect all the tracks and all the inputs. So it's a totally different thing than what we were doing. This yeah. is just kind of yeah. like the ghetto way to do it on one track. Yeah, like this is like a workaround. <laughs> like, like, hey, I'm yeah. using this since cool i can yeah and i want that synth to have to... like a cool build up thing okay cool yeah i've got a button that i can use it way. on here exactly. yeah totally <laughs> yeah, totally. yeah something totally different that's the thing each one of these boxes is they're they're for their own thing mm -hmm. and you know the uh, you see all the time in in chats where people are saying oh they they limit this so you have to buy another one and it's like no they're different things you know it's not like they limit you know, it's not like they make a sports car without a truck bed just to make you buy a truck. It's like, no, if you need a truck, you buy a truck. And if you need a sports car, you get a sports car. And it's the same with these. You right. know, nobody complains that the subsequent 37 doesn't sample because it's not a sampler. It's a synthesizer. And right, the right. Syntact is a synthesizer. And the Octatrack is a Swiss Army knife of everything. And the Digitact is a sampler. sampler. And so, like, they, yeah, yeah. they all have their own individual things that they do. Yes. And the Oxy is a super powerful outboard sequencer that does mm -hmm. its own thing. And that's why I use it with the other ones too. Cool. All right. Then on that note, I think we can wrap it. Awesome. Um, yeah, this was fun. Thank you everyone for joining us. This is, yeah, thank you guys. This has been a good stream, super informative. Learn, I've even learned a couple of tips with the Oxy, which is, which is great. Um, but yeah, good. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you guys cool. very much. Yeah, and again, you. put comments or questions in the chat, or I mean, in the comments. In the description, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that way we'll <laughs> be happy to answer those back or, or, you know, reach out on other socials. Happy to answer whatever. Cool. Thank you guys very much. Take care. Cheers. Yeah, have a happy Sunday. You too. <laughs>